Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and this one is a mono green elf deck featuring a whole bunch of new cards from the Jumpstart expansion. And one of the more exciting additions for any green ramp deck is Craterhoof Behemoth, the 8 mana 5 5 beast with haste. And when Craterhoof enters a battlefield, creatures we control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the number of creatures we control. So this makes for an awesome finisher in any green ramp deck that has a bunch of mana elves. And then of course we've got a whole bunch of other new additions, including Elosaurus Shepherd at 1 mana, a 1-1 Elf Shaman at Mythic, and the Shepherd can be countered, and then afterwards the green spells we control also can be countered, and for 6 mana until end of turn, each Elf creature we control has base power and toughness 5-5, five, five, and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other creature types, so they still remain Elves, so they can still get those bonuses from our Lords, but they also become 5-5 five, five dinosaurs, so that's usually enough to win the game in most situations if we have a bunch of creatures out. And then another exciting addition is Dwinnan's Elite, a 2 mana 2 2 Elf Warrior. And when the Elite enters a battlefield, if we control another Elf, we get to make a 1 1 green Elf Warrior creature token. So we get multiple bodies and then a lot of power and toughness for just 2 mana. And the Dwinnan's Elite also synergizes quite nicely with our next new addition, which is Elvish Arch Druid, a 3 mana 2 2 Elf Druid, giving other Elf creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, and then it taps to add green mana to our mana pool for each Elf we control. So this can generate tons of mana and then can help us ramp into creatures like the Crater Hoof. So those are just a few of the new additions for the Elf archetype in Jumpstart. There's definitely a lot of ways you can build an Elf deck in Historic nowadays. You can build it more like a Stompy deck and include cards like Steel Leaf Champion, which is a great 3-drop. You could play additional Lords like Imperius Perfect that can generate Elf tokens. You can play Finale of Devastation as a nice ramp finisher to search up your Crater Hoof Behemoth to end the game. So there's a lot of potential inclusions. You could play Growing Rights of Itlamok as another combo piece to generate extra mana. In the end, I settled on including Lead the Stampede as one of our few non-creature spells in the deck as a way to help us refuel, since Historic does have a lot of red decks with cheap burn spells that tend to take out our key elves over and over, so having a way to refuel with a card like Lead the Stampede seemed pretty important. So we're playing three copies of Lead the Stampede, a sorcery that lets us take a look at the top five cards of our library, and then we can reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put them into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. So this just helps us draw a whole bunch of elves at once, so if the opponent tries to one for one us with uh, burn spells, it's not gonna end well for them. Now, Lead the Stampede is a card with diminishing returns, so if we're gonna play four copies of Lead the Stampede, each individual copy of Lead the Stampede gets worse, since we'll have fewer creatures in the deck, but that's why I settled on three copies alongside two copies of Beast Whisper as another potential card draw engine as a 4 mana 2 3 elf druid that says whenever we cast a creature spell, draw a card. So this alongside Lead the Stampede is hopefully gonna keep our hands nice and full. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana of course we can go without four copies of Lanor Elves to help us ramp, can set up a turn 2 Elvish Arch Druid, which can lead to many good things. And then we also have the full place of Pelt Collector. I did want to make sure I had enough one mana elves to enable the turn to Dwinnan's Elite making a token, so that's why we're also playing the full place of Pelt Collector, even though it's not optimized in this deck since we're not playing cards like Steel Leaf Champion, which would synergize with the Pelt Collector nicely, but it's still a pretty menacing one drop that the opponent will often kill on the spot, so that can maybe save another elf from a removal spell. Then at 2 mana, of course, we've got our Dwinnan's Elite, Elvish Visionary, a nice one, 2 mana, 1-1, one, one, that when it enters the battlefield draws a card. And speaking of Visionaries, another elf we could include is the Lenor Visionary from N21, a 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and taps to add green mana to our mana pool, so just goes to show how many options we have in historic elves nowadays. Then we also have two copies of Incubation Druid, another mana elf that can add one mana of any color a land we control could produce. And then if we have a bunch of mana laying around, we can sink it into the Adapt 3 ability, turning it into a 3-5 that then generates three mana instead of just one. And then the full place of the Paradise Druid, a nice follow-up to a turn one Pelt Collector, as it will pick up a plus one plus one counter. And then Hexproof means we'll get at least one use out of our Paradise Druid under most circumstances. And then the full place of Elvish Clan Caller, 2 mana 1 1, giving other elves we control plus 1 plus 1, and also doubles up as a mana sink for 6 mana we can tap it to search our library for an additional card named Elvish Clan Caller and put it onto the battlefield. 
Then we've got our Leader Stampede alongside Marwyn the Nurture. This used to be the main mana engine card before Elvish Arch Druid, and since it is legendary it does have diminishing returns, but I'm still happy to play one copy, since it is quite powerful if we get to untap with it, especially if we then have a Leader Stampede to draw a bunch of cards, or maybe a Beast Whisper to help us draw more cards, and then we can use all the extra mana from Marwyn to empty our hand. And then we've got Elvish Arch Druid, and then two copies of Beast Whisper and a Singleton Crater Hoof Behemoth to hopefully help us end the game. And then a mana base, we've got 17 basic forests and then four copies of Castle Garenbrig, which is also a very important addition as it can jump us from 5 mana all the way to 6 mana, which is then enough to maybe activate an Elvish Clan Caller or an Olasaurus Shepherd, so it can potentially speed up the kill by an entire turn. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty nice hand. Turn to Marwyn, and if we get to untap with it, we can generate a lot of mana. Turn one mountains, usually not a good sign, as we see a Gitu Lava Runner. Well, there's also Elvish Arch Druid, but I'm still gonna play Marwyn first. But that's probably not gonna survive, but then maybe the Elvish Arch Druid does. And this also lines up better if our opponent's playing Goblin Chain Whirler. Because if we play Arch Druid and get it killed and then play Marwyn, it would die to a Chain Whirler most likely, whereas the other way around, the Arch Druid would survive. And yeah, we'll just play the Arch Druid now. But the red decks are definitely the worst matchup for the Elf Archetype, generally speaking. They can burn your key elves, and then it's difficult to get traction. Hardfire Immolator kills Archdruid. At least your opponent is having to spend their entire turn killing our elves, which means we can maybe refuel with a lead the Stampede and then kind of take over. At least that's the hope. For now... Don't want to lead the Stampede quite yet. I'm probably just gonna Incubation Druid plus Spelt Collector. And then maybe next turn we can lead the Stampede. Another Heartfire Immolator. It is a wizard, so our opponent playing a bunch of wizards here probably has Wizard's Lightning, and the newly added Grim Lava Mancer is also a wizard, and a great addition for red burn decks. Is it time to lead the Stampede? I think so. And then next turn we can go Pelt Collector into Paradise Druid to give them a plus one plus one counter. And a young Pyromancer. This one not a wizard, but also a great addition from Jumpstart. Arcanist currently doesn't have any 1-drops to get back, so opponents on empty, that's a good sign. So we'll go Pelt Collector. Can use the castle first here. And Allosaurus Shepherd's gonna be a nice finisher for us here. Can play the next turn and activate. So wanna keep that in hand for now. Opponent does have their own castle here. And that does let them get back the lightning strike, thanks to the additional power on Arcanist. Probably takes out the clan caller. And then don't really want to make blocks since every creature is valuable with the shepherd in hand. Another castle. Attack with all. And our opponent's in Shumblock mode. Now 
All right, we're at nine life. Hopefully no burn spells here. Ooh, shock. That's gotta be bad. They can pump, get back shock. And that's gonna, I guess, not quite kill us. And our opponent concedes, even though we got to minus one, there was a visual bug. Because, yeah, by flashing back all those cards with Arcanists, they did miss out on the two spells in Graveyard for the Lava Runner, so they didn't get the additional bonus. Wow, super close game. And, uh, yeah, managed to beat a red deck, which is not something we get to say every time. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. We're missing a Mana Elf, so we can't really ramp into the Beast Whisperer. But I don't think I can afford to mulligan. We'll start with a Pelt Collector. Typically want to keep Shepard until later, unless we're playing against the blue deck where the Counterspell Clause matters. Alright, Paradise Druid was an awesome draw. A Gross Pelt Collector and ramps towards Beast Whisper on turn 3. Facing an Esper deck with a renowned Weaponsmith, alright. So some sort of artifact ramp deck. We'll attack with a Pelt Collector, opponent takes it. Play Beast Whisper. Ideally we can play Beast Whisper and a small elf in the same turn to draw a card right away. And wow, opponent ramping with the Gilded Lotus into Stone Coil. So our opponent's going big, but now we get to go off and draw a bunch of cards, hopefully. Lead a Stampede, more card draw, but we want to make use of the Beast Whisper while we can. I typically like playing the cheaper elves first, gives us more options. For instance, had we drawn an Elvish Archdruid a turn sooner, or a draw sooner, we would have been able to play it instead of the Clan Caller. And uh, I guess these can attack. And if they do have a Sweeper, we can maybe still recover with a Lead the Stampede. can also just activate the Shepherd next turn, so we've got options. A Golos is gonna search up a land. It's gonna be Blast Zone. Yeah, that's a good one. Although we don't have that many one mana elves in play at least. So can I kill my opponent here? If I play the land, activate Shepherd. Yeah, our elves are going to be 5-5s five or 6-6s, six so they can potentially fall to 1 life. But that's not quite lethal. If we had a Castle Garenbrick here instead, we would have been able to kill them. So... I guess we'll just play more elves and draw from the Beast Whisper then, instead of activating Shepard. And then I can still attack with most of my elves. Well, hopefully no Ugin. Activates Golos instead, and finds the Fairy and two lanes. Probably bouncing the Archdruids, but I don't think it matters at this point. Still a bunch of mana floating. They can activate Blast Zone if they want, killing Shepard and Lanor Elves. But that should still leave us with plenty for lethal. It's gonna draw with a Mind Stone. Don't think they've played a land yet, so they could gain two of Fountain. 
but yeah, opponent explodes, a nice start from the elf deck, was able to take down artifact ramp, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, don't have any mana elves, but I think we can keep. It's a triple one drop start and to lead the stampede to help us refuel. Start with the pelt collector in case we draw paradise druid on turn 2. Facing a temple of deceit. So likely pointing towards the control deck. Now if something bad happens to my lead the stampede, our hand does fall apart. Luckily just a search for Ascanta. This is actually a close call between Paradise Druid and Lead the Stampede. Might just be Paradise Druid. It's a fairy, that's fine. Yeah, we might face a Sweeper next turn, which makes me not necessarily want to go Pelt Collector into Dwinnen's Elite. So how about we lead the Stampede and see what we draw first. Not the best. Yeah, we'll just go face and uh, keep the Pelt Collector in hand for now. a tap land and a cry of the carnarium to sweep the board shatter the sky we have another lead the stampede to refuel, but uh, I don't know how long I can keep this up. Definitely not a matchup for Crater Hoof Behemoth, as the third sweeper hits the board. Alright. This is better. Alskanta is going to transform next turn. So we can go Beast Whisper into Arch Druids, or I can go Beast Whisper into Paradise Druid plus Shepherd to draw more cards. What are the chances that Arch Druid survives here? Pretty low. Could technically cast Crater Hoof Behemoth. Keeps the card on top, so Skanta doesn't transform yet. Narset, pretty good against her Beast Whisper. Now we do have a Shepherd in place, so her opponent can counter our uh, green spells. Although, Settle the Wreckage is a good one to know about. Although her opponent doesn't have double white up, which is uh, pretty relevant here. And we'll discard Cubation Druid, maybe. Now let's get rid of the Beast Whisper. Opponent's got a Narset in play anyway. Every of fear. Yeah, let's Crater Hoof. And go face. 
no subtle mana. And we did it! Wow. Beat Asper Control, surviving three sweeper effects as the poor elf deck. And we got Crater Hoof in play. Well, that was just about perfect. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Ancient Ziggurats playing a Grim Initiate. Alright, not sure what we're up against. It's a red black sacrifice deck. Okay. Played Visionary first in case we drew another Lenor Elves. Fine sacking the Visionary here. And then we want to try and get the Beast Whisper in play. Now two Grim Initiates dying is not the best combo since a mass ends up on the same zombie when the Sacrifice deck would rather have multiple creatures. At least they can't use Claim the Firstborn on Beast Whisper here. And they're also missing red mana. Blood Artists, that's another new addition from Jumpstart. Definitely powerful card in any sacrifice deck. Another Blood Artist. Alright. Start with a Belt Collector. Just want to play the cheaper elves first. Yeah, we'll play the elites. That way we get to sacrifice a token. Can even attack. Next turn I could activate the shepherd too. Opponent finally finds an actual mountain. Cauldron Familiar. And Claim the Firstborn steals the Shepherd. They are down to one card in hand, but the damage from Blood Artist, Priest, and Cauldron Familiar does add up. Alright, so definitely can't kill my opponent this turn, so we gotta set up for next turn basically. If I play Visionary first, I can maybe play an Archdruid, which can generate a ton of mana for next turn. Lead the Stampede, we'll just go Clan Caller then into Paradise Druids. But I might be dead here. Grim Initiates. Not a Blood Artists. Yeah. We're just dead on board. Don't think they needed the claim. GG's.
All right, so on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Turn one Lunar Elves is where this deck likes to be. Although most decks with Lunar Elves would like to start with it. And then Elvish Clan Caller can pump the team, but also makes for a nice mana sink if we don't draw any additional card draw engines. The Absan Triome. The fact that they're still pausing here means that they might have some zero cost uh, cards in hand. And next turn we can unload our hands, play double clan caller. And there's the Sultai Triome. And now hope they don't have a sweeper. Diligent Excavator, that's fine. So they must be on a Kathis combo deck. And Moxamber is what was uh, holding priority last turn. Can also just activate Clan Caller, but playing another one lets me attack with my mana elves, so that seems better. And our opponent takes it since they're dead on board. A nice turn for a kill. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hand. Let's see what we're up against. A blue deck and a fairy miscreant, so blue-white flyers most likely. I'm okay trading for the miscreants, not to attach to the pelt collector. And next turn we can play Marwyn, which will set up a nice turn four. All right, it's blue-black, so maybe not quite what I had in mind. Opponent passes. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna attack here. Seems a bit suspicious. And our opponent did have a Fairy Vandal, which would have ambushed the Pelt Collector. So maybe just a blue-black Fairy deck or Flash deck. Curious Obsession makes sense. And another Fairy Miscreant. And Nightshade Stinger. Another 1-1 one -one Fairy Rogue. Not sure what other new fairies there are from Jumpstart, but I guess we're about to find out. Alright, sequencing here. Now, lead the Stampede is a little awkward with Castle, so probably wouldn't be able to make use of it here. So let's lead the Stampede first. Not bad. Playing Pelt Collector is free for the purposes of Marwyn. I do want to get the Archdruid in play as soon as possible. So we'll do this. Alright, opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an amazing hand here if it survives. Turn one elf, turn two Marwyn. And then we've got a ton of mana to work with. Could maybe use a lead the stampede or a beast whisper to help us draw some cards afterwards. Otherwise, we can just activate Clan Caller. Blood Crypt untapped and a shock. I 
I do want to keep some amount of elves in hand for post Marwin, but uh, yeah, we'll hold the pelt collector. Fervent Champion and Knight of Ebon Legion, so Red Black Knights. They can pump the knights. Twin and Elite, not bad. And we can just smash. And her opponent explodes. All right. Yeah, if Marwyn survives, she does hit pretty hard. And then next turn we could have used her for mana to activate Clan Caller. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a great hand. Turn one elves into turn two Archdruid. Don't think we've gotten to untap and activate Archdruid on turn three yet. And against the turn one forests, our odds are definitely increasing. Now growth spirals, our points are ramping. And a migration path. So land based ramp against creature based ramp. And now we've got a ton of options on how we sequence this turn. So we want to play as many elves as possible before tapping Archdruid for mana. So... We'll go Pelt Collector... Into Visionary, I guess we can Visionary first. Beast Whisper. So this taps for three... Four... Play Beast Whisper into Pelt Collector. So we're not maximizing the amount of mana we made with Archroot, but we are maximizing the amount of cards we'll draw with the Whisper. So this is seven mana. And mass manipulation to steal Beast Whisper. All right, could have been worse. Activate Castle. So I just get to empty my hand here. There's nothing fancy about it. Opponent gives us a GG and explodes. Sweet. Alright, so they must not have had an Ugin in hand. So yeah, the elf deck can have some very explosive starts, especially with the Arch Druids as a powerful new addition for the archetype. And as I've said in the introduction, there's a ton of ways you can build the elf deck. Arch Druid is definitely going to be a staple for of going forward, but uh, there's a ton of wiggle room if you want to make it a bit more beatdown with the uh, Steel Leaf Champion, that's totally an option. You can maybe go more in the combo direction with Cradle or more Marwins to generate more mana and make it easier to cast a Crater Hoof Behemoth, although then the deck might be less resilient to removal spells disrupting your game plan. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to build it, although I have been quite impressed by Lead the Stampede, often drawing three or four creatures, so that's a nice way to potentially fight those spot removal heavy decks. 
So yeah, I'm very excited to be exploring all these new historic decks with all the Jumpstart cards. Jumpstart definitely brought a lot of new tools to the table. And if you want to help decide which deck we cover next, you can always head on over to Patreon, where we've got our poll for people to decide which deck we cover next. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.